Hello, I'm Robert D. Johnstone, and today I'm going to show you how to make beef tallow. Featuring Ziggy Stardust. He's got something on his back, I don't know what it is. You are stinky. You are stinky. Yes. <laughs> you are very stinky. Let's spend a moment to talk about bioavailable proteins. Now, you might be used to seeing rapeseed oil uh, being used to cook everything. Um, you might have heard that butter is good to cook things in. The second, very correct. Uh, in fact, it's all correct. I'm just doing this ad lib. I, fuck it, don't care. So here's why cooking with beef tallow is superior to both oil and butter. Now, beef tallow, if you are already eating a lot of meat, like specifically beef, you can make use of uh, the offcuts of fat that you might usually throw away. Now, not only is fat, when rendered down into tallow, absolutely fucking delicious, it is also extremely bioavailable. Now, what does that mean? In layman's terms, at the very least, dictates your body's ability to um, absorb nutrients from that which it is consuming. Now, there is absolutely no nutrients in rapeseed oil whatsoever. You probably already know that because plenty of studies have been done on rapeseed. So, I like to change a little bit here, but I don't care. So, anyway, uh, where was I? Bioavailability, yes. So. There are far more nutrients in beef fat when made into tallow, and um, there are far more many nutrients that you can absorb by cooking your meats and your eggs and things in tallow. Also, it's delicious. You can do anything with it. The other week, I had run out of butter, uh, and I fancied some jam on toast. Um, and I couldn't be bothered going to the shop, but I did have um, some tallow in. So I thought... Hmm. Would it be too weird for me to melt down a bit of tallow and put it on some toast with a spot of jam? Um, it was actually very nice. It was too nice. I haven't done it since because, um, you know, it's a little bit weird doing that. I don't want to be making a habit of doing that. But it was extremely delicious and now you know what i think i might do it again and put it some point soon when um, when i feel like having jam on toast again but also you can probably get it for very cheap and the only issue being at least in my instance now because i've just made um a batch that is 1.3 kilos it's a bit of a faff and if you have an extra bit of time on your hands in an evening um to do uh, a big batch of tallow, then uh, very good. If you don't have, if you're if you're strapped for time, then maybe consider buying some tallow from me um, in the future. <laughs> but anyway, um, if you go to your local butchers, if you buy from your local butchers, already you're doing better than most of the general populace. If you're buying from your local butcher. Usually, they will do nothing with the fat if they are not already making tallow and jarring it up themselves and, and selling it. But usually, there's not much, there's not much um, in that because it's a lot of faff, and you know, not that many people these days cook with beef tallow because the uh, the people that own all of these big companies they want you to be cooking with that which has a much higher markup. Yes, 
the vegetable oils, the seed oils, even the olive oils. I like olive oil. I don't mean to give it any kind of slander, but butter, tallow, animal fats, just infinitely better for cooking. So if you say to your local butcher, can you save me the beef fat? They will probably say, yes, it's going in the bin anyway, because they're not going to do anything with it. Um, and then also another bonus of beef tallow is once you've rendered it right down, it will not go off. You could come hell or high water, that would just not go off. Unless you were intentionally trying to make it go off, then it's not going to go off. I, what I would say is I've never kept beef tallow um, just in a cupboard. You, you could probably keep it in a cupboard and it would be fine because it's literally just rendered fat. It, it, there's no... Um, there's nothing in it that would that would make it go off as long as the, it's in a sealed container. I usually keep mine in the fridge just in case, you know. So let's have a little look at how our tallow is doing. So it's been on a low heat, both pans simmering away for about 25 minutes. Now, usually for a smaller batch than this, I would recommend doing this for about half an hour. This batch is quite large, so I will probably do it for a fair while longer, maybe, maybe up to an hour or so. As you can see, there is quite the pool of beef tallow in there in this left pan already. Wonderful. We will have a great harvest this very night. We will have much tallow to be used moving forward. And also, the great thing about tallow is what I like to refer to as gribblies. Thought I'd come outside because it's quite nice out. Um, gribblies. Let's get on to the gribblies. That's why you're all here. It's why John's here. I can see you're watching this, John, and I know you're here to watch me talk about grizzled, lovely, crispy bits of meat. Now, when I say gribblies, what I mean is the solids that are remaining in the pan as the tallow is cooking off. Um, you will rarely, if ever, be able to make all of the fat completely render down into fluids. There will always be some semblance of solids there. And after a certain point, the solids will um, reach their natural conclusion of emitting uh, fats that can be rendered down. Now what you will be left with is dried, crispy bits of meat. Uh, essentially it's how crackling is made, if you've ever had uh, sort of pork or beef crackling. This, basically it's crackling. Um, I've just got a fucking weird name for it. Gribloids, crispy gribloids. Um, I got it from uh, I don't know where I don't know where I got it from. It's from my childhood. I I, um, I used to uh, I used to repeatedly um, drug runners living in the suburbs. Great, isn't it? Land of hope and glory. Do 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 do. Anyway. Gribblies. They're delicious. They're crispy bits of dry meat. Put them in your mouth. Eat them. They're good. Now, now we are reaching the 35 minute mark of the process. Look at how deep that pool of fat is. Look at it lovely bubbling, cascading away. That one you can't really see because the light doesn't touch it, but it's still all the same. You can make out those bubbles there. It's roaring away like a cauldron of sa uh, poly, um, not polyunsaturated fat, that's the complete wrong one, saturated fat that will be used throughout the next few weeks to cook my steaks and my eggs and glaze my potatoes and do other things, all sorts of lovely things with this delicious byproduct. And here we have it. The final stages, the gribblies are there. 
we're just at a point now where it's ready to cool and decant. So there we have it, half a litre of beet aloe, it smells magnificent, and yeah, it's going to be a joy to cook with. So, let's test her out, take her for a spin with a lovely bit of rump steak. Uh, my phone died whilst I was... Uh, cooking the steak annoyingly so uh, I didn't get a chance to actually um, do any filming but you know what a fucking steak looks like I've, I've got enough of them cooked on my uh, story to uh, uh, my story and feed to for you to know what one of my lovely steaks looks like yes so um, try it yourself stop using rapeseed oil Use butter, because butter is good. It is butter is bio 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 bioavailable, um, but yeah, stop giving money to massive horrible companies who want to feed you toxic sludge and shorten your life expectancy and make you ill. Stop allowing them 